Hi, my name is Winslet, and welcome to my video diving deep into the Item Forge and Binding Essence. The Item Forge is used to build new items, and Binding Essence is the resource you use to make the items. In this video, I will cover the best way to get more Binding Essence, like how you can disenchant your horse, and I will go over a couple of the strongest and most accessible infusions currently in the game, as well as the nerf to Killing Momentum. So I think the easiest way to get more Binding Essence is to take the Reclaimer Society trait. This one will give you Binding Essence for clearing out infestation spawners, ancient wonders, raising cities, and pillaging provinces. And while that is really nice, I don't think it's necessary to use a Society trait on getting access to that much Binding Essence. After talking to a few people, I've come to the conclusion that the best way to get more Binding Essence is to be aggressive with free cities and to kill off their hero units. When you do that, they will end up in your crypt and they will have some gear. This guy has a staff and a robe, which when I sell his remains, those will end up in my arsenal and I can turn them into some binding essence. This one's worth 80 binding essence, and this one's worth another 80 binding essence. And every once in a while, you may want to disenchant um, some nicer stuff just to give you enough binding essence to build a better infusion or a better item. Right now, I probably wouldn't want to disenchant my vampire spider or my unicorn, but I may have some other mounts that are lower tier that will get me the binding essence that I need. Like, for example, I think, do I have any other heroes around here? I know um, I have some in some of the other stacks. Yeah, like this guy, I could trade out his pony for a unicorn and then disenchant the, um, the pony because it's, not as valuable to me. It's not going to be available for disenchantment for one turn, but it's worth keeping in mind. When you are trying to get more binding essence, it's important to keep in mind that the industrious culture does get the ability to prospect mountainous regions and the underground starts get access to uh, excavation a little bit quicker. You can always get excavation and go underground to get more items, but there has been a pretty significant nerf to the frequency in which items show up when you are excavating, um, so it's probably not as good as it could theoretically. Now, theoretically, if you're really low on Binding Essence, one source you can use is your heroes. You can recruit a hero with the um, intention to just take their gear and to maybe get them killed. If they die, then you can get another hero with gear. It um, is really a question of how much gold do you have and how badly do you need Binding Essence, because this is going to cost me 350 gold to get, I think, two items here. Let's go ahead and recruit you, go to my hero right here, because I can't unequip the, the sword or the shield. I can just get the helmet and the pony here, and from there, we can turn that into, I think it was about 80 binding essence, so probably not the greatest exchange, um, but if you just need a little bit more influence to get an item, I think it could be worth spending the gold to get that item up and running for a big fight. We are now ready to look at some of my favorite infusions. If we go to the sword and pistol combination, the dual weapons, we can add the ability to get more crit chance right here. And then I think the one that works really well with it is range. Um, you would need focus crystals and uh, rainbow clovers in order to get access to this and I think it just needs one of each. I did use a little bit of console commands to unlock the ability to get access to um, this plus extra range but I believe that before I did that I had enough rainbow clovers with just um, one rainbow clover to get this one and I think if you need more it indicates 
it right there. It says needs two rainbow clovers. So this one is relatively accessible and allows you to be pretty powerful. If you didn't know already, you can make it so an item does a specific type of damage. Say you're fighting undead, then you can all of a sudden turn this into half physical damage and half um, spirit damage. Uh, this is many as many infusion points as I can put on here, so I can't get more crit chance and the extra range. I think this is probably one of the better combinations. It costs 300 binding essence and takes four turns to build. Um, after that, I wanted to talk about a item that gives slip away. I think you can get boats that uh, boots boats. <laughs> you can get boots that give slip away relatively quickly, relatively easily. You get slip away from Astral Dew. Um, so if you're able to get Astral Dew, you can make it so that your charge heroes are a lot harder to deal with, or you know they're a lot more annoying to deal with. And um, in case you are in a game where you can't use console commands, you can always use show locked by clicking this button. Nothing's locked because I did use the console command here, but it is nice to be able to see all of your options uh, before committing to anything. Just so if you needed one more resource and you have access to that resource, it's just not quite in your territory. You can go get that before spending your very valuable binding essence on a item that could be better. Another one that's quite nice is the killing momentum ring, I think it was. Let's go ahead and look at the rings. If we go in here, rings are near the bottom. So we'll go there and try and find the one that gives killing momentum. Yeah, right here this says it requires two haste berries, pretty valuable. You could see in a in a team game it could be worth giving one of the players two haste berries while the other one doesn't have any haste berries just so that they can build items for both players that give you killing momentum. This means you'll get an action point when killing another unit with melee magic or ranged attacks. I'm wondering why they're clarifying that. There may be other types of attacks that don't quite fit into um, that criteria. Uh, but yeah, I think that is a good point for us to talk more about the changes to killing momentum. All right, so in this battle, my main hero now has killing momentum. So when he kills off a unit, he will get an action point back. And the big change is that they no longer have movement. It used to be that you could move after shooting and then attack, which was really good for melee heroes. I believe now if you you sprint after yeah, afterwards, um, you can move a little bit and attack. And I heard that if you are slowed and you use sprint, that actually gives you two actions to work with. So a melee character um, can get some benefit out of that. So yeah, don't forget to keep that in mind. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you around. Have a good one.